The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here on this Thursday, June the 2nd. We're looking at the Dow down 170 points <clears throat> after a really amazing move from 30,635 to high of 33,272, I believe. Yep, 272. So we've pulled back. Actually, we've pulled back uh, 600 points. Pretty, pretty sharp move. But within that context, I did not like last Friday's action. Certainly, we enjoyed it as, as subscribers enjoyed it. We've been long uh, since the day after the low <coughs> that was made on the 20th. But more importantly, I wanted to see a pullback on Friday and then a strong move up for maybe a leg B at this particular point. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying <laughs> that it would have been much more. We had two sessions of very sharp rotational correction different sectors, different uh, areas of the market. The Dow actually made a fractional new high yesterday. It should have been a peak A, and today we're getting our peak A. And I think Microsoft's adding to that by pulling back. And there are a couple of Dow stocks that are, are pulling back. I think maybe Johnson & Johnson, uh, Procter & Gamble, some of the defensive stocks. I'll, I'll check them out in a moment. But more importantly is that the spectacular move to the upside it has the potential. And I just say the potential because we don't know um, that to have what are called Chapman wave squash, where the stochastic goes from under 20% very quickly to over 80% in the daily chart, in this case daily chart. The MACD aperture expands widely between the 9-period differential, the green line, and the slower moving 26-period moving average. The histogram moves very sharply higher, and you get the crossover of the 9 above the 14 turns green. <clears throat> so, so far, all of that says... There should be enough talk to power the, the market slightly higher. And what I do is I make measured moves. I make a move from the 30,635 level to the 33,272. And then I say, well, it could pull back about a third or maybe even a little deeper, but it could back, pull back about a third. If it's, if it's shallower than that, <clears throat> then what I expect is about there's a potential for a half of the entire gain from the low that's made often, in this case, the peak A, if that whatever the, the trough the low is, to the upside. And that could complete a B and a C, and then you have to wait, and then you get a D. That's if there's a Chapman wave squash. In this particular instance, if the Dow is able to climb into the 33, uh, no, it has to go way higher, 33,450s, yeah, that's a big ass. That's 800 points from here. Um, you really have to have leadership to do that. Um, and, and it does it in leg B or B and pulls back to C. That's going to be impressive. Higher it goes in this particular leg, the better it is, obviously. I don't want to get too carried away other than to say we've got a buy signal. It hasn't been upgraded to a buy mode in the daily chart. The weekly chart, I have to wait for the entire week to finish. That means tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Before I can make any decision, there is this a buy signal. I haven't even got a uh, look at the unbalanced volume in the weekly chart in the middle here. Very poor. Stochastic still very poor at 27%. A lot has to happen. And in fact, you have to break this Chapman Wave uh, down channel and close on a weekly basis somewhere in the 33,900 to 34,100 to say, wow, that is fabulous action. All right, so we're just going one step at a time. Um, a question came in about. Uh, what's the stance? Stance is we're in a uh, we're in a buy signal, almost close to a buy mode in the daily chart. The weekly chart still a lot of room to left. So on the shorter term, I'm expecting a rally to unfold to continue to unfold. Um, intermediate term, I'm still saying keep a little. You got to keep some money ready. Keep your powder dry because at any point. You can get a two or three thousand uh, point smash to the downside in the Dow, because we have conditions now that are really. I am looking at this and saying there's a chance. I'll get there in a second. I want to talk about copper, but there's a chance that within the context of what we're looking at here, the overall 
uh, inflationary aspect could be ameliorated if crude oil, it was earlier on, but now I can't say that, if crude oil starts to pull back a little bit more because maybe the Saudis, whoever it is, comes in with extra oil uh, to take up the slack. Uh, it's a complex situation. That uh, oil is yeah, Higher oil prices are going to remain high for a while, even if there is a pullback. So and with that context, and then looking at the DBA, which is our agricultural fund, it's pulled back a little bit. It's in the rectangle formation. So there's your agricultural part that says maybe you could start to pull back. And if we see some alleviation of the inflationary aspect, and uh, maybe with a jobs report tomorrow, maybe there's a sign that says, you know what? We could actually see a little bit more um, rallying. And then we can go one step at a time. So looking at the E-mini, we've got a PG doji candle right there in the arch formation of the 10-minute uh, chart spiraled up from basically sitting around the 4,090 area. And then boom, it goes, spirals up to the 41.24 level, 41.24.50 uh, doji candle. Look how long it held that 200 period moving average. And then it just could not, it just could not, poof, comes tumbling down. And now you've got your first gray leg A in the 10 minute chart, but that's really improved. <laughs> Funny, I actually had a, a buy as we went to the news at 10 o'clock, but I put a really tight stop. So I got stopped out, and here we are setting up. And now we're only down 450 in the E mini in leg B in the uh, one minute chart. Nice action. This is the kind of action I wanted to see. That's all right. Days young. Now, what we're looking at is uh, within the context of the different indices, let's just do this quickly. The SP uh, now has come back quite nicely. It's only down three at 4,098. It's got a leg B, could be a peak B if there's no new high above yesterday's high. But the MACD strong stochastics at 89%. This is just like the Dow. These are really positive aspects. I like this on the shorter term. I can only go one step at a time. I'm, I'm not one of those that talks about uh, Dow 60,000. I like to go, it might be in the back of my mind. But I'm not talking about it because first you've got to overcome the near term. How can you even talk about the longer term until you can overcome decisively a lot of barriers? So let's just do, go to the QQQ. Uh, the QQQ is up 30, at 307.57, up uh, uh, 58. And just for clarification for um, subscribers, all along the Dow, we're all along the Qs. Um, we're looking at this. Uh, not bad. It's got a leg B. It needs to clear in fact, by Monday, we need to see 315, uh, 307 right now. We need to see three, sorry, three, 313 to 315. That'll be fabulous action. If there's a pullback and we close under 302, I'm not saying fabulous action at all. So this is the near term. IWM acting quite nicely up $1.80 at 186s. Um, it needs to get to the 191 level to say, hey, I'm also participating. Wow, Dow's now down only 50 points and the s and up five. I like that. Um, let's go to the, um, yeah, I said I'd mentioned high-grade copper. Look at this high-grade, look at that move in copper. Um, it is up 0.20, 20 cents at 4.53, um, up 4.7%. And uh, look, it just smashed through the 200 period exponential moving average but it is leg D. However, coming off a low, you're going to get your Ds and then you can start recycling. But this is really good action. Let's see what FCX is doing for Port uh, Up to at uh, 41.70, up 5%. Yes, I like the drop as why. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk party, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, we're back. So let's just go to the TLT, which is the bonds. TLT is at a peak D, uh, pulls back sharply. It couldn't get, uh, you remember, I spoke about this in Champway Methodology. You want to see strong legs to the upside. You want to see a leg A, then a pullback, and a strong leg B. Not just a minor blip above the previous high, in this case, peak A, and then another pre slightly higher high to C, and then a fractional high to D. That's never good. That says, be careful, because now you could be thinking of the H, the dreaded H pattern. That's that lowercase H arching over. Although having already got to D says you've used up upside strength, but you probably also use downside weakness so that you could be stuck in the range. And that's kind of what I think is happening in the yields. So um, in this particular instance, I just want to show you this bigger chart that I had from the left side, right side. I used time rather than price in this particular instance, the 133.19 TLT low uh, back in March uh, uh, of last year. Uh, rallies up and then it uh, went to 152.72, pulls back to the 140s, then goes back in like a, a cup formation or a V-shaped formation, hits 155.12 just above, and then closes below after that in December, and then this is a weekly chart, and it comes down. And I said there's a measured move between this low here back in March, the low in October, and four weeks ago, and we went there exactly in time, but price, of course, was major. It was a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside of this whole cup formation. Now, what's really important about this is that what we're looking at is Within the context of, if I can just get there, there we are. within the context of looking at the yields, the TNX, which is the, the brown, oh, I'm using the white background. So this is the TNX is the 10 year T note yield, um, is rallying, but it, it's not breaking out to the upside. It's not up in the 32 area, it's in the 29s, 2.9 that is, percent. Um, and I think it's going to have a consolidation here. And that's really what's going to happen. If it, at any point in the next, in, in June, if it closes below 27, I'm going to make it 26.50. I want it to be decidedly lower. That's 2.6. Um, that's going to be a big deal, a really big deal. Um, and that's going to say that bonds are finally running and they're running quite strongly. Um, I'm looking also at questions that I had sent to me here. So uh, one was, 
Would I look at, where did it go? Where did it look at, uh, uh, could I look at Toll Brothers, T-O-L? Um, it's within this rectangle formation. It made an all-time high. Was this an all-time? I believe this was an all-time high. Uh, I think it was higher than the 2007 highs. Yes, certainly. Uh, yeah, we go. Oh, wait a minute. I said certainly. No, that was the high was. Oh, I remember this so well. Uh, back in July of 2005, it hit 58.67. So it is underneath that in this big arch formation. Uh, well, well, it's under it now, but it has broken out above it and has gone to 75.61. So this is a big pullback, and I suspect that if you're looking at the um, the the housing sector, look, HGX, you know, Tom, Tom O'Brien has spoken about this a lot. He's spoken about how HGX, he's spoken about how he has lightened up his uh, real estate portfolio a lot. That doesn't mean to say he's not buying, you know, doing other things. But the bulk of what he wanted was to to to, to do some selling. And if you look at the uh, if you look at the HGX monthly chart, I do have this as a peak B. I can't count it as anything else. I could make it a C, but I can't make it a D. So it's pulled back very sharply, and it's gone to a leg D. It could be a trough D if this month you you don't see a move below. Uh, 372.96 and it's showing you right now at 406.73 and that just says to me that in the in the larger context yields are a factor um, the fact that many people who are, who are looking at houses we're in the housing market have, have three different areas that they have to consider one is where do I move because if oil prices remain high like this, I might have to move a little bit further away because I don't want that, those huge expenses if I don't have any other way. If I have to go to work, that's something I have to consider. There was a period where people were not considering that. They thought, okay, uh, we're going to be working at home for the rest of our lives. I know a number of people said to me that. And I said, you know what? There's a tradition. I don't know how you can break that tradition. And the tradition is seeing your colleagues meeting your colleagues, building a friendship, building up, building something that you don't really get uh, via Zoom or any medium like that. You can get something like it, but one-to-one -one relationships are way more important. And I think that a lot of people, especially younger people, though they don't think so now, they think, oh, this is cool, i got all this time, are, are going to find that working at an office, even if it's not full-time, but being there and knowing the colleagues, knowing the people that you're working with, is it's a it's a really big factor. Whether it's the most important factor, it's not for me to say. I don't know. I know that it's going to be an important factor. So in the housing market, it says that that that's part of it. So you've got higher higher prices for your mortgage. You've got l um, lower footage meaning that you can't afford as much as you could have, uh, say, six months ago. Um, and that could make you move out as well as oil prices. And but that might not stay, but we don't know. Who knows, right? And the third factor is within the context of um, the housing market itself, all I can say is that never in the history, that I, as long as in my his, history, of home ownership and, and owning and selling uh, houses uh, periodically. Um, all I can say is I have never, ever considered that I would say to the, the realtor, um, well, a lot of the time I did uh, buying and selling myself. But when I dealt with the realtor, there's no way that I would have said, no contingencies. I want that house. I'm going to overpay for that house. No contingencies. No. I've been around when houses have dropped 50 percent. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to buy a number of times in recessions, waited for recessions, or just been lucky. Um, and I don't know if anybody out there has had that experience, but I've been on this side where I've been wanting to buy, and the homeowners nearly cried with joy to see somebody actually ring the doorbell to say, I want to see your place. One person said to me, I've waited a year and a half. Nobody has come. You're the first person to come. Welcome. Um, uh, yeah, and here in the Newton area, Newton, Massachusetts, the Garden City, 
I have seen prices drop 50%. Uh, I'm not saying this is the one that's going to happen. I'm just saying be aware that when you just drop your contingencies, well, certainly the Northeast, I don't know about the South, but I know that here, if you don't have your the basement, if you don't have your roof, if you don't have all these things looked at, the expense starts at thirty to forty thousand dollars. So that's a factor that you've got to take into consideration. And because of that, I'm just saying that the housing sector. So this is a very long answer to uh, Toll Brothers is to is to say. Um, my answer is if you buy because you're going to live in it and it's, that's really what you're going to do, yeah, you can pay overpay, that's fine because you're going to watch the price every day. But if it's on spec, I wouldn't be touching it, right? I'll be back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. FNN.com. Tom O'Brien has just announced a live Timing the Trade webinar Friday, June 10th from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Join Tom O'Brien for five hours of live education as he teaches you his trading methodology right from his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. In this live webinar, Tom O'Brien will be teaching you his entire trading system, including quality volume, ABC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points, and more. We will be limiting this class to 40 attendees, so please do not delay and reserve your seat today for this special live event with Tom O'Brien. All attendees will also receive a physical copy of his book, The Art of Timing the Trade, an $88 value, mailed to you, along with the free month of his daily newsletter, Market Insights, a $169 value. For all the details and to reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Sorry, in the den. I, I typed the, in the wrong place. I thought that I typed into the den that I was going to look at uh, stocks, and uh, now I, I, I've wasted a whole bunch of time. Um, but let me just finish up here with Toll. I look, Lenar, I think they're in a digest, a huge digest. Lenar has got a peak D. Um, the, um, and that says to me, that's, that's one I always have my eye focused on, especially since the symbol's L-E-N, and we've got Len from Cape Coral, who I haven't spoken to for years and years. He was, the, he was, the, uh, he was unbelievable in buying up properties in every single recession from the begin beginning of time, him and his son, and then he sold almost right at the top in 2005. He was selling for the first time. And then he bought back some of the houses at the, at the prices that he had bought before. They had the spectacular rally in the last, when he bought them in the last dip. 
So that's Lynn from Cape Coral. Um, uh, hi, Lynn. If anyone knows him, say hi for me, please. Um, we usually uh, we, we um, send one another uh, New Year's greetings, Christmas greetings, New Year's greetings. So uh, Lenar is at 7973. It's in a consolidation phase. The longer it stays here, the better it is because as soon as rates, if they start to come down a little bit, That'll help to see the market move, the, the housing market move up. But right now, I would say as trades, I mean, this face from 71 to 79 and a 10, 11 percent gain. Sure, absolutely. So I would just treat it as in, in a range and I'd, I'd be careful. I think there are going to be other areas that you'd like to be looking at uh, for longer term. Shorter term, that's something different. Here's another thing. I, I, so a question came in. What about the semiconductors? Yeah, semiconductors are moving off lows. 215 was the low on the um, 12th of May. It's They're struggling. I, I need to see the semiconductors really break into the 258, 263 area with it in June. And that's going to say, wow, maybe finally we're going to start to see the chips come into play. Um, but I can tell you that uh, some of the, the auto dealers, uh, one in particular I'm hearing has got I think 2,000 cars or something to sell in the United States because of the chip shortage. They, they're low on the totem pole, I guess. Um, and there's a major, a major international company. Um, just very little inventory. And uh, so that, that's a, a big issue. And I, as I'm saying, you know, I said that there'll be, there'll be a glut. But to fill that glut, there is such a demand that you're going to have to get that demand to be filled. And that takes months and months and months. So, yes, I think in 2023, we could be looking at a semiconductor chip glut. But until then, we've got to be respectful here. So I do like the semiconductors in terms of the stabilization. It's just important in the economic structure. But as trades, I've been very hesitant. Um, if you have got the SMHs or a derivative of the SMHs on the long side, what you really want to see is you don't, at 232 right now, you don't want to see a two-day close below 235. Under 235 means, you know what, it's, it, it looks like the, um, the housing sector is just stuck in a range. But if there is a push into the 252 and then push higher, you have to see a close above the high that was made on the 20th of April of 253.27. And I, actually, that's not even good enough. It's got to be higher than that. You got to be. You got to get to the 200 period moving average of 258, and treat that as a magnet for a little while, not being uh, repelled from it, just attracted to it. And even if it pops up and comes back and tests, and then third week of June or so, if that's the case, you want to see 263 or higher. That to me would be very, very positive. It wouldn't be overly bullish because the weekly charts are still very poor, and the monthly chart is very poor. That that would be a good start. All right, so now let me do this. I have, oh, let me get that. Okay, so let me go backwards if you don't mind. I, I've missed the thread, um, the sequence. Yeah, let me go. So huge volume in CHWY. I never understood this. My, oops. My contention has always been I don't have a pet. Over the years, when I had uh, small kids, we used to have uh, budgies. Uh, Huey Lewis, Bernie Ernie, but no. And I had to actually give injections to one of them for diabetes. A long story, very, I hate to say it, but it was a very funny story. I, the bird survived for a long time with me giving injections, although my daughter, a little four or five year old, saw it and when we went to the doctor. We couldn't understand why she hid underneath the table. Of course, if she was watching a bird getting an injection, why wouldn't she? Anyway, so um, Chewy is. I always thought that this people would the last thing they would sacrifice is buying food for their pets or a, anything to do with their pets. But wow, peak D in the 120 area uh, back in 2021. It was it January? Wait, let me just check. It hit a high of 100. Oh, I remember 120 round number high. I had to redo this and I forgot to type that in. Introduce it. Oh, a round number high, ever, ever high. Um, so that was the high, uh, 2021, and it has a little bit of a tumble, and it goes down to the low of four or five days ago in the 20, 22 or 23 area. 
22, 22. Oh, 2, 2, 2. 2.22. All right. So I would call that a little bit of a tumble, uh, not, almost 90%. Uh, this is a serious thing. And and then it came out with really good earnings, and it's up a whole four points at 27.40, struggling. So this is one of those things, you know, Peter Lynch, uh, the old Peter Lynch uh, story. If, you, if, if this is a product you're buying, you really like it and all that. <laughs> well, if you bought it at 120 round number, if you were the top tech, you wouldn't be happy right now. This is the Eiffel Tower straight up, straight down. So all I can say is this is the starting point. You see this rectangle here? It's made a lowercase h with a lower low, but it closed above it within one bar. Now it's making a second one. So I love to do this. I love the rectangle, and I say, you've got yourself a lowercase h. What does that mean? Let me just draw this in here. There we go. A lowercase h, straight up, straight down, number one. Cup formation, number two. Arch formation number three, a mix of one and three. This is one and three, lowercase h. And how it tests the left side low is important. Well, it just fractionally took it out at 22.22. Then it ran up in the rectangle formation, bounced to the resistance level, and pulled back again to the lower end. So this lowercase h can become a lowercase m. If at any point within both the rectangle and the arch going to an M formation starts to decisively take out the arch high on the left side, that's this particular level right here of 28.52. If there is a cl if there is a close above 30.20, in other words, we've gone into the 30s. 29 really breaks out, but I, I'm going to give it a little bit of room because it's taken so much time. And even with the good news yesterday, it hasn't yet broken above it. Finally, Chewy can have a really decent rally. There's the 30.99 period exponential moving average in the weekly chart, 34.41. I think that's going to be the huge test in June. If Chewy at any point can close above 35.50 in June, that's going to say, whew, finally we've got something going here. So this is the Eiffel Tower uh, from 20, the low, all-time low was 20.62 to 120 in February, February of 2021. And the Eiffel Tower says straight up, straight down, uppercase A. If Above the left side low, it starts to form a base. It doesn't have to test the low. And that's going to be really important. So you have to go back to the test. The, that's the um, monthly chart. The weekly chart is starting to see better technicals, but the price is still disappointing. It's the daily. It's going to be very important. Chewy, trading at 27.49, needs to get to the 30.25. That's the Better situation. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, right, so, so to go with the builders, let me just do this here. Build the BLDR is a symbol, is one that I focused on for subscribers at some point, but we've never really owned it. Uh, when we're looking at it, it had made a peak E in the weekly chart, only a B in the in the monthly chart, so that's still very positive. There's another way I could count that one. And the art formation, this is that dreaded H pattern that we were talking about a moment ago, 7860 back in March, pulls back to test the retest the lows in the uh, high 50s, and now it's trading at 60, uh, 65. Um, this is the one. Keep your eye on this because I think this is going to tell you a lot of, give you a lot of information. So if it, it starts to trade, uh, let's see, in June, at any point, just give me a yell. I might not see it. If it actually closes above 72.50, let's look at it because that could say, okay, now the builders are going to start to move. Just I think that's the way it might work. Let's watch it closely. Uh, let me go backwards here. So uh, Cody wanted to know about CCI. Um, sorry, I, the den. I've got. I'm gonna have to go backwards. I can't go forwards now because I've already lost the thread. So uh, this is CCI Crown Castle. We once had a really big profit in this. Haven't been in for ages. It's a REIT uh, towers uh, A, B, and a huge pullback today. Look at that. It went from. Uh, a low of the 169 area to the 190, 193s just four days ago, and today dropped down to 176, coming back with the Chapman Wave Roman candle here. Oh, this is just telling us, and I've been a little bit nervous about the IYR, um, that's the, the REIT sector itself. It, I see such a mixed uh, series of chart patterns. It just, I, I think it needs... The, the REITs need a little bit more time. AMT, that's the, um, yep, I've still got another, American Tower. Yes, a big consolidation was one of my favorites. It's just consolidated, big, big uh, um, consolidation r right now. AMT at 251 down, 58 cents. Okay, now, so that's CCI. I, I'm just going to say, I don't not like it. I just don't think this is the, t oh, this one's good. ECH. Oh, I see. This is the M. This is the, oh, this is the chili. I thought you were looking. I thought this was part of the REITs. This is the chili. I forgot to type in what it is. It is the chili ETF, right? The country of Chile. Huge leg eight. Almost look, looks like the Dow. Huge leg eight to the upside. Pulls back yesterday and today. It's a green candle. And I, I remember last time we looked at it and I said I liked it. It's tough to get into something so, so strong. But I am going to say, I don't know if you're in it at all, uh, Coda, but if you are, um, hold on. You would probably say to me, where could I add? Well, the uh, weekly chart, I just may, need to be absolutely sure here. I think it's a, a leg C. Uh, 2980, 2980, 2981, yes. A, B, this is a leg C in the weekly. Uh, the monthly needs a lot of work, but it's making a higher right side high in the H pattern. I like it. I'm going to say if you aren't in it, in your particular case, you like to look at the big picture, start a position at 30.48. In your case, I know I can say it. I'm going to say just for the moment, take a 10% uh, risk. So you start your position with a $3 stop just for the moment. But if you start your position here at 30.48, 
if it takes out 30.97, the high of the 31st of May by one penny, add another trading position and try to keep this as a core position. But that would take you to a leg B. If peak B stalls at 31.20, just barely above A, and then pulls back, I would say take profits immediately on your trading position and keep trying to keep the core. But there's a chance that you could get a bigger consolidation from a peak B. Unless peak B is really up in the 3150s or higher, if it's just a small peak B and then it pulls back and becomes a peak B, it could very quickly test 2953, the low of yesterday, and go a little bit lower and then start a brand new up sequence. So that's the way I'd be looking at it. Next question is, I'm going backwards. I did that, I did that, I did that. Oh, question about... Uh, someone said uh, HPQ, HPQ, well, I have I had that all notated at one point, but I don't think I've got it anymore. Nah, naked chart. Oh, yes, I do. Uh, leg D goes to peak D, Hewlett Packard, HP Inc. Uh, this is acting so well. I wonder what they're doing. Well, of course, they've got the printers and people still need to print, but um, they've got you know, many other uh, electronics. So this is acting so well. Um, this is a brand new leg. A to the upside, but until it breaks decisively above, right here. Uh, we've got so many. This is like the Dow. We have so many stocks that have spiraled up in a single leg A, and um, now what do they do? So this is a peak F back in April at about 41, 50-ish or so. Drops down under the 200 period moving average. Yes, I have to consider in the daily chart, this is a brand new A, but it's under the previous high, so that could fail. But it is a new A, gray A, I call it. No, I have to say, well, I have to call it, because it's the first peak, I'm just going to call it a gray A. But the MACD is strong. The 9 is over the 14. The MACD uh, histogram is very strong. And the stochastics at 83%. This is good action. Now, is this going to be a head and shoulders pattern? Whew. I don't think so. Well, at this point, I don't think so. I like it. I'm not sure what the question was, but it came up. I like it very much if you're in it. To buy it right here when it's so close to the resistance, even though this is an A, that's tough. But a stock that is just a few dollars off its, in this particular case, because it was refreshed, right? You look back at, didn't they do something? Oh, no, this goes back years and years and years. Uh, well, it's a multi-year high. Multi, multi, it could be an all-time high that was made just three months ago. That's a very good sign. So I'm just going to say, if you aren't in it, this is tough, but if, you, if, if it, you've raised the question because it gapped up and it's held the gap so well, I'm going to say start a position at 39.51. If you don't mind, I am going to say to you, you're going to have to have a, about a $2 stop. But if at any point you start your position at 39.51, if it goes one penny above, it's the same story, one penny above 40.11, the high of the second, high of yesterday, Add another, that's your trading position. This will become your core position. And let's just watch it from there. Oh, I never look. I'm going to write it down. Here it back. It's nice to know that some, something in the in the tech sector is doing so well. Next question came in from KHC. This is Kraft Heinz, I believe. Kraft Heinz um, trading down. Now, this is what I was talking about recently. I said it made a peak F in the weekly chart. So it fits into the whole defensive area and because the defensive area which is really the XLP I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure it must be part of the XLP in the cup beautiful cup formation and I didn't do this at the time I did draw in the left side right side price time match it got there a little quicker this is your plumb line right there just fantastic look here's your plumb line right here there right there and there's your Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line. And it came to exactly 44.95 was, how many double tops have we seen? 44.95 on um, the week of 28th of May, 2021. And here in the month of May, May the week of the 13th, it goes to 44.87. I mean, this is like a textbook case of double tops within pennies. I think it was 85. Um, pennies and then it plunges down so it's getting close to some kind of support but i'd be real careful because this is in the xlp the defensive area and that's the reason why i wanted to go long for subscribers uh to my opening call um 
Ah, estou a ocupar o tempo. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So a question came in. A uh, 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 rental man wants to know, he says, Hi, Bowser, can you look at Tyler Technology, TYL, as I'm looking to sell a portion of my shares? And what leg is it currently in? would like to hear your analysis. So I'm going to do this uh, right this moment. This is leg A, peak A, peak B, and it's just squeaked, I believe. No, it's still an A. Uh, 364.26, 364.840. 4, yes, there it is. So this is what I'm going to recommend. Um, on, on the session, I, I really want you to spend more time on it, and I'm going to do a little bit of work, and I'll do that tomorrow. But your question right now is, uh, you wanted to take some portion off. It's having a nice session today, up seven, but it's under yesterday's high. What I would do is this, get, going into tomorrow, important jobs data tomorrow, yes. What I'm going to suggest is, you ask my opinion, if you want to take off, I would take off part of the position of 353.17. If overnight any stop you put in can be hit, then put in a stop. But if you can't do any of that, you have to wait till tomorrow. That's a different thing altogether. I've got a left side, right side price time match. And it says that if a SARS to failing goes under 320, that's, that's really important. It's at 353 right now. So take a little bit off. But I would, I would, take, I, I would put a stop in, take a little bit off at 353. I would like to see it try to get to a higher high. Um, and I would put 349, four points, that's 1% or so, 
I put another stop if you can if that can be hit overnight or tomorrow, that's one thing. But I would take off something now and split the other one and put it four points lower. But I think this is just starting to climb. The technicals are starting to improve a little bit. So that's what I'm saying. So let me do this. I'm sorry. I'm going to go through the notes and I'll go through all the stuff. I'm a bit late. I apologize. Uh, NDAX. Oh, a lot of things I should have brought you. I'm sorry. I'll write it down. I'll get it tomorrow. Meantime, back in the rash. Dow's down 156. So far, this is the action that I want to see. Another more celebration session. Then we need to what happens tomorrow. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Great programming. Check out my book all day.